In this episode, I rewire my ECU, I start my car, and I say sorry. Hey guys, my name's Aaron. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if we're meeting for the first time, consider subscribing, and if you do, smash that notification bell. Uh, also, I've got a website, builtonpurpose.co. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, it should have, well, I'm trying to build a resource for a modified 240Z, so hit that up. There might be some bits and pieces you like, but bear in mind it's still in development. Uh, I will also have busted this episode up into chapters too, so you should be able to skip through those to see the various bits and pieces. Uh, but yes, I've got three things to do. An apology, uh, show you my wiring, and show you how I started my car. So the first thing is an apology. I wonder, you're probably wondering why I am uh, have an apology. Uh, so the, it, it's, it's basically uh, saying sorry to all those people that said, get rid of that MS1 and upgrade to that MS3. Uh, by the end of this episode, you're probably, un well, rolling through it, you, you should see why. Uh, I'm very sorry that I didn't take that advice sooner. So starting the car was actually a very simple process. Uh, one of the things I really do like about the MS3 is being able to test all your outputs. Uh, now I'm running sequential injection with a distributor based ignition. Uh, I was able to, you can um, use the test mode to check each individual injector. You could fire it, so I was able to check to make sure that was right. Uh, the uh, Check the coil. And that was simple enough. Uh, with my, I'm running a Nissan optical sensor um, with the DIY auto tune, the 12 minus one disc. I did try and recycle my MS1 properties and that did not work at all. Uh, my MS1 base timing was 50 degrees before top dead center and that looked like it was too close to top dead center for it to work properly. Uh, the fact I think I did have one of my um, cylinder number one trigger settings as pole event rather than rising edge swap that it worked but in the end I think I ended up with 312 and a half degrees for tooth one before top dead center if anyone's wondering I think the DIY auto tune says start at 345 and go there but I ended up being it's quite a fair way from 345 so once it was all set up it was time to start the car And so clearly at the second hit of the key, it fired up. Uh, the key things that was a takeaway with the MS1, whenever the electric fans kicked in, the engine would really struggle. It did not miss a beat, hey. It was like nothing had happened um, with, with the load from the fans. It was crazy good. I can't get over, it. it's like chalk and cheese. And with the sequential in injection, it was rock solid, stable idle, like it didn't shake around too much and... Sequential injection? That's crazy smooth. This is just the first startup. I'm sorry, I just can't get over how easy it was just to actually run this car with the MS3, which is exciting. Uh, the thing that did railroad me is my um, air temperature sensor started throwing out some strange numbers. It kept jumping around a bit and it shot all the way around to 170 degrees and I wondered why all my properties were starting to retard and then I jumped in and cut out all the the um once it gets past a certain air temperature it seems to retard quite a bit and it was uh, uh, extrapolating those values and I was getting uh 20 degrees retarding and stuff so I quickly threw them all to no effect at all and it brought the engine back but there's something in the background that must be working off that uh, the air temperature which wasn't sitting right so I've got to investigate that before I do anything further it seems high risk to me to try and tune a car and drive a car when the air, air temperature sensor is either not calibrated or broken. So some background on rewiring this car. Um, if you've followed my, my channel um, or watched my previous episode, uh, I've changed from an MS1 to an MS3 with an expansion board plus an internal knock module sensor. So uh, I've rewired this from scratch. I pulled everything out. Um, there's only maybe half a dozen wires that stayed in the original MS1 DB37 loom. Uh, I did invest in getting some 90 degree boots on my EV1 connectors as well as, well, I got a Bosch fuel pressure sensor and two uh, knock modules, uh, knock sensors. I got all those through EFI hardware. Now they're an Australian brand um, and I really recommend them. I've bought all sorts of bits and pieces off them too. Um, I also bought a proper F crimp tool which um, I 
recommend if you're doing a lot of crimping just buy a good tool it saves a heap of time and it's a bit of a bummer because I actually didn't take any photos of the how easy it was to crimp these things so um, chances are a few of you viewers are probably familiar with EFI hardware they ship internationally uh, I will put links to EFI hardware in the description um, but if you're in the market for some bits and pieces and you need a good supplier hit them up so this is the wiring here. Uh, it all comes in through the original factory hole for the old choke for the SUs. Uh, inside this here is two different looms, one for all the injectors which goes to the expansion card and the other loom is essentially all the sensors there. And also there is the twin core microphone shielded cable I got for my trigger. So you can see it goes along here to these injectors using the these um, swanky 90 degree boots. Uh, the first sensor to jump off is the air temperature sensor which is still attached to my Z story uh, strut brace and positioned close to the trumpets. And then uh, once the last injector, sorry when that focuses, last injector tapers off the the um, remaining is uh, wires are just for triggers and sensors and it goes through if you can see that's the connector to the Nissan optical distributor which is inside there uh, and my temperature sensor which is on the front of the thermostat housing which you can't see <coughs> um, one thing I have done away with is I'm now running a coil I got rid of my uh, MSD 6AL uh, CDI and there's a good reason for that because I'm I forgot I've always been a big fan of the CDI ignitions, but I've got my reasons for just switching back to an MDI ignition. Um, but that's the hot side. Oh, so I've got my TPS at this end. Um, when it focuses. There we go, the TPS at this end. And my earths, I earth everything from my ECU to the battery. So on the cold side of the engine, this is my fuel pressure regulator with the Bosch fuel pressure sensor, which I picked up from EFI Hardware. Uh, and this is a vacuum referenced fuel pressure regulator. This T-pipe is for my map sensor on the ECU, just to record map for now. And then once I've got a completed map, I will switch that onboard map sensor to uh, barometric correction. Uh, also, if you can see, there's one knock sensor and another one. They're using existing bosses that are on the block. And the ultimate goal is to um, drill and tap bosses there between cylinders into this meat above the Welsh plug between cylinders one and two and the detonation prone and other end of the engine which is between five and six. So this is inside the passenger footwell. So these are all the wires and map lines and power feeds that come through. I've kept the uh, loom for the expansion board separate to the main board um, just for tidiness. And I redid do uh, I did redo my power board um, so that my relay powers the power board, and then this goes to the fuel pump relay. P previously, I had the f the um, main power relay uh, going to another relay, which was triggered by the fuel pressure um, line from the mega squirt. Then it powers the main board. Um, that just caused me no end of issues, so I took the opportunity to rewire that. So that's the wiring in a nutshell. Uh, leave a comment if you got any feedback. Uh, I know there's some things like where I'm running my trigger wire isn't ideal, uh, but time will tell to if, if that actually is effective and uh, that nasty uh, trigger interference disappears when I take it for a drive, I guess I'll find out. Um, but yeah, that's the episode in a nutshell. Uh, again, subscribe, like this video, please. Uh, really appreciate it if you went to my website builtonpurpose.co um, just to see what you think about the resource i'm just trying to build a, a database of knowledge for everyone and i'll catch you in the next one until then see ya